Good afternoon. Welcome to the first episode of Opinions on History and Mythology. And my name is Paul Mike. And here with me is a beautiful... Whitney Johnson. Okay. I know she's plain, very, very coy. <laughs> and Are you? trust me, she's very, very... This is like she's all smart, smart, okay, smart. Okay, okay. Thank okay, you. You're um, treating my honey a little bit too much. Okay. Thank okay. you. But I'm supposed to. It's, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> so... Um, today we are going to be talking about Queen Eden. She lived in the 18th century and in the Benin Kingdom, to be very precise, and her husband was Oba Wakbe. So we are going to take a moment by reeling in and hearing about Queen Eden's story. Eden Repol, her wife of Oba Wakbe, 1780-1712 AD. Her praise in the contributions of women in ancient Benin history, a tale of love, devotion and sacrifice. Queen Eden's contribution to the Asian Benin Kingdom is arguably one of the stiffest sacrifices in Benin history. Queen Eden was a beloved wife of Oba Wakpe, who reigned from 1780 to 1712 AD. According to history, the reign of Oba Wakpe was characterized with a series of ill fortune and vicissitude, so that all subjects in the kingdom revolted against this reign. The rebellion penetrated the palace walls, even the chief's wife of the harem, children and all the palace functionaries were not spared. Queen Eden became the only friend of Ogba Wakpe in time of great calamity, as she resisted every temptation to desert the Oba in an unprecedented show of love, loyalty and devotion to her husband and king. She observed Ogba Wakpe's hopelessness as it lingered and finally decided to take the bull by the hunt by consulting Ogyogbo, an oracleist, the mouthpiece of the gods, for divination and how to ward of the calamity bedeviling the kingdom. The Oracles of the Divination informed her that all that was required by the gods was a human sacrifice. In despair, Queen Eden broke the news of the king. The question that bordered Obawake thoughts became, who will the human sacrifice be? Seeing that the kingdom was de desolate, there was no other human being in his palace free of bound, besides his dear wife, Queen Eden. In the midst of the Igrealio, Queen Eden volunteered to pay the ultimate price by offering herself as a sacrifice according to the dictates of the gods. Before she was offered, Queen Eden requested from the king that her grave be kept clean at all times. She also cautioned that on no account was anyone step a foot on her grave, else such a trespasser must pay the ultimate price of death on the spot, as a mark of ultimate reverence in her memory. Her sacred and memorial tomb is situated adjacent to the current palace of the Oba of Benin. Post courtesy, Leslie. Contestual information by eduworld.net. Um, welcome back. I hope that you enjoyed and he you heard everything contained that story. And it's actually, actually, it's something that we need to. Do I say we need to talk about it? Yes, we do need to talk about it. So, what is your own opinion on the entire thing? Okay, so, for me, most. Honest point of view that I have to bring to this topic, I can honestly say that Queen Eden was very badass. She was so bold and confident enough to be willing to sacrifice herself for such a great cause. Because all his other wives left, all his other subjects decided to leave him as well. But Queen Eden stayed where she stood her ground and decided to sacrifice herself for her people and her husband. So. Well, I. For me, I feel like if things are done better, she wouldn't have sacrificed herself. In what sense? I'm not, see, I'm not seen. I'm not seen. I'm not judging what she did at all. Mm -hmm. At all. I'm not judging what she did at all. But from, I feel like if she did something better, if, right. not that if she did something better, mm. if the king was better, yes. a quote and unquote from what I heard, mm -hmm. or what I've read and what we have seen so far, then I guess I said it would have been a different story because she wouldn't have sacrificed herself if you he just if he knew where and where to actually place his priorities right because sure. from choosing who his special advisor was going to be to him quote and unquote all his traveling and the queen mother not getting buried and everything so it just comes across as sad <laughs> okay i'm not going to lie he was very much of a bad leader he was a bad king he was very much of a coward as well and if he was honestly like placing his priorities right like you said things would have been different but yeah. as things were not different <laughs> and if he truly wanted i feel like he should be, have been the one to sacrifice himself 
but I mean, stood up and like he's, he's he, charge. Yeah, he's the Oba, so I mean, you're supposed to. Mm-hmm. Exactly, mm-hmm. pay the price for his people. Yeah, but even her story is being compared to that of Jesus. What do you think? Yeah, honestly, in some way, I actually do agree because it was a very like bold step to take. Like Jesus Christ, he made the most selfless sacrifice of sacrificing himself for sinners and Christians all around the world and everything. And for her people, and because she loved her husband so much, she willingly sacrificed herself. Like she was the one that tried to convince her husband that she she wanted to be sacrificed so that her people would come back. Because my husband, her husband was honestly saying, "Oh no, don't do it. We we'll find another way." And she was like, "The oracleist told me this is the only way, and I'm willing to do this." It's like just kind of open and willing to do this for the people that he cared about to save them. So I even I even heard up to now <laughs> you dare not step on her. Oh grave. yeah, you cannot because, because five <laughs> days later, they, they, according to quote and unquote, you, quote, I don't I don't stand the stereotypical here. <laughs> You're talking about Edo people here. You understand? You don't, you don't play with them I'm like that. With you my... Don't play with them like that. So yeah. as in so they say. They give you five days, you step on her group and think you're going to and no one sees you and you think you'll get because of democracy and everything. Oh no, you die. Yeah, you Stay die. <laughs> and I even uh, there is a story concerning the special advice of the king, the oh. Ness Oba, who oh, actually yes, danced heard. and then he accidentally well, after, stepped, stepped on, on her group. He yes. was beheaded. Yeah, and, and then was, that was that sad. Like after that's celebrating as in for twenty three days and then you dance your way to the it's about, oh, for 19 days, sorry, and you dance your way to the palace <laughs> only to step on the queen's grave and then be killed. So you, you you thought you're actually going to accumulate a lot of things by being one of the king's special advisors. And then you died. So, sorry about that. <laughs> as, sorry. Oh yeah, and this condition was made before she was, you know, buried alive. As She made sure, she made the king promise that anyone sitting on her grave would be killed and that her burial ground would always be kept clean at all costs. All so it's always clean and it's, just, it's still there close to the Oba's palace up to yeah. now and it's sometimes I think they should decorate more as in they should actually put a lot of flowers yeah. or something it just looks basic to me but Sorry. I'm not here to actually criticize your work <laughs> I mean you're doing great just yeah so uh, concerning this our own opinion on this history and then concerning mythology we're going to be talking about Baku Baku <laughs> it's a mythical creature from from India. Yes, yes. from India. <laughs> from India. <laughs> yes, and so he's known for taking away bad nightmares. But according to Whitney, she <laughs> has some things to say, which I I personally think as in is different. But I I will leave her to explain. Okay, so basically, I call Baku the leftover animal because when he was created, um, his creator basically just took leftover parts from every single animal and just mushed it up together. And created Baku because Baku looks like an elephant with the ears of a bird with the <laughs> trunk of an octopus and I'm like ah ah this is like boro boro make me rich so it was just a lot and I'm like yeah but then he, if you if you see okay like the angels for example they are not exactly pretty from the bible definition of what angels would look like so but when she, when she's, you know. <laughs> she she also said and I'm going to tell this as a secret she's not going to hear it but she also said that um they are the nightmares. <laughs> no, okay, 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 fine, fine. Let's not judge um, the person's, I don't know, let's not, okay, okay, and let's not judge a book by its character. Let's just not just judge the face or the character, characteristics or the look or outlook of what it looks like. Let's judge it by what it actually does, which is mm, to... Take away nightmares. your nightmares. <laughs> and pray you see back when you're asleep because... I don't know from Whitney definition. I want to see him. Please, you take away my nightmares. I've been having nightmares, serious nightmares. Don't worry, it'll come soon. I pray so. Okay. And then basically, just eats up your nightmare and then you sleep peacefully. Okay. And, yeah. And that is also her opinion on Baku. And concerning... Okay, we are going to move to our next session. Our next session is... Oh. Random questions. It's, oh, it can be random. It can be anything random. Anything so don't random. be expecting that this will be happening over time. This, no, it's not going to happen like that. <laughs> This one is random questions, and okay. we get to ask Whitney. The yes. first question is: What is your most confusing? What's the most sorry confusing situation you've ever been in? Um. Uh, hmm. Okay. 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 So my first day in camp because I got, I got posted to River State, where uh, you know I redeployed. I have to come back home. <laughs> uh, what happened? So I was at the airport coming back, and I know the cab that was supposed to take me to camp, but of course the airport taxis were overly priced. So I got a boat. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but unfortunately, welcome, welcome to Rivers. Honestly, welcome to Rivers. Uh, apparently, both of us was and they're not allowed to enter into the airport, so he had to pack outside. So I was going with my things, you know, and all of a sudden, I saw a policeman trying to arrest him. So I had to run to the car, drop my things in. But then, my phone and my bag fell out. And that's where the problem began. So I told the guy, I was like, okay, my guy, <laughs> calm down and pick up my phone and my stuff. He was like, no, 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 that he can't do, arrest me, arrest me. I'm like, please, my mother is going to panic <laughs> and it's going to be tragic. So he was like, no, mm-mm. I have to go. So I opened the door to reach and get my phone and I... W7. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I fell from the car, injured my knee and the guy drove off my stuff. Sorry. Yeah, it was, it was something. <laughs> I still feel sorry for you about that. I'm sorry. Thank you. But it was, it was fun. Adventure of a lifetime. But I got my things back. So that, nice. that is not what I says adventures. <laughs> she might, that's what she says. But honestly, that is not what I want to experience. So, mm-hmm. another question is, what's the most useless talent you have? Hmm. I'm honestly, I don't know. Um, hmm. Okay, I'll go first. I think I have okay. the ability to turn my tongue in my own mouth where no one sees it. Okay, let's, let's see. Let's see. You're not going to see it. You're just going to hear it. Okay. So how about you? <laughs> Something happens. To... Um, hmm. Don't worry. Say anything. The camera does is your friend. Oh, uh, wow. Um, <laughs> let's see. Let's see. I can I can fake accents. Exactly. Okay, she should she, she, she should try maybe let us let us go as no. the British thing. Let us imagine you're having coffee. Okay. Um, so what what situation should you be in? Okay, you you're a married, rich, rich, elegant empress who <laughs> who have seen an entire world and mm. she's having coffee. Now say say those words like Okay. What an awkward situation, like Oh, okay, let me just like you know, pretend I'm taking like yeah. know, tea or something. I think he up. <laughs> um, it was a very awkward situation to be in. So thank you. I did good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yay! If I go to the cinema, I'm giving a five for ten. <laughs> <laughs> what fictional character would be the most boring to meet in real life? Mm, okay, so I'm currently watching this series called The Office, and there's a character called Angela. Yeah, that's what I have to say. Why do you think Angela will be boring? Because I don't know. I don't even know The Office. I know it's a series that Megan Marco is supposed to be on or something. Oh, um, it has Steve Carroll in it. I don't know. <laughs> he voiced um, Drew from Speakable Me. Yeah, yeah, I, I know him, but I'm, I don't okay, know, okay, like, okay, The okay. Office. Uh, you should watch it. I, I will share it. Um, okay. Okay, so Angela. Angela is just uptight, conservative, and just She's just a very boring person. I just all like you wow. honestly, you honestly have to watch it to see and understand where I'm coming from because Angela was Angela is like your basic Karen, for like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's that's, basic Karen. I think the most boring character to me for ever going to be is Aurora from uh, Maleficent. Why? Well, oh, I I well, love well, well. I love her personally mm. as the actress, but no. I feel like she's very dingy. Like oh, yes, so I know she has a bubbly character, but at the same time, she she's just dingy. She's yeah. just. I maybe she played that character too too good because I saw one of her other movie and it was actually she was very superb in it. Yeah. And I was like, ah, uh, maybe that was the the, the aura they wanted to use exactly. for it. Yeah, so yeah. next question is, mm-hmm. what are some things that sound like compliments but are actually insults? Oh, you've added weight. Oh, um, I don't know. You look pretty for a dark girl, you look pretty for a light girl, something like that. Um, or, oh, this is one. Hmm. I don't know why I find this, like, offensive, <laughs> but then, oh, you look good today. Like, the emphasis on today. So, every day that I've come to try to look pink and cute, I don't, I don't look good. They, they found it as, hmm? nah. Mm. But that, you should actually compliment people more because... Exactly. <gasps> An actual compliment. There's, there's a lot of effort being put in this you. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Remember, I'm just seeing that a lot of effort is being put. But I, most of the time, I don't think I just throw things on. I don't really, really 
except the days where I want to actually look gorgeous. Yeah. Like gorgeous for the camera. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I get to wear something good. Oh, but nice. me, I, the intro, I think I've always said this thing that when people randomly tell me, tell me things like, uh, you look like your mother. You have not seen my mother. Don't make that <laughs> conclusion. You don't know who she is. When you say, I look like, you look like a girl. That's a like, very stalkery for you to say if your mother. And I've never actually seen your mother before. Exactly. That's, that's weird. Like, how do you know my mother? Are you stalking me? Like, maybe you should say something. Maybe she knows you also. Exactly. If you're going to help like, me. Follow up. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to help me, like, because. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just guessing. And so, thank the beautiful Whitney for coming again. Thank you very much. Because as in, it's not easy. And <laughs> I kept stalling her for a long time, honestly. Yes. So next time when she comes, I owe her something by saying she's going to talk about what she needs. And yeah. What she feels like talking I about. I wait. I mean, it's kind of wait. Ah, I know. Because she has a lot of, I mean, she's mm. a historian who mm-hmm. got first, first class. So. <laughs> Too much information. But yeah. So you should know that. Looking forward to the next episode. Mm, and thank you with thank you for coming for and thank you so much so we've come to an amazing place of this show and don't forget to catch us for our next episode we'll be talking about all reacting to different things that you suggest so thank you and Bye. you have a great day